Okay, so on 4 11 24 10 p.m., I got this one. It's called Our God Reigns. Um, Strong's 1000 is an egg or to throw a distance. Strong's 10 is destruction. And then a behood son of Zerubbabel, which is the father of the Jews. Okay. The Lord God Almighty reigns. He is eternal and he is majesty. His word endures forever. The Lord God is unmatched and has no rival. His patience is perfect. His love is pure. There is no God like the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. And I got, I just happened to look at the clock at that time, which I rarely do. And it was 1045, which means to serve, to minister, and then the tribe of Gad. Who is like the Lord God Almighty? No one. He offers compassion and salvation to all who come. He is hope. Eternity with God is blessed and joyful. Wicked and evil have had a time to bring man down. Their time is to increase, but for a short time. Their time, at the end of this time, they will be bound for the next age. A world with joy, peace, and without the conflicts that evil, destruction, and decay being upon man. The age of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will be after the harsh rule of evil and wickedness. The living word will walk the earth with his people. He will bless the waters that flow from the holy temple so that they heal the land and heal man. The Holy Spirit will be full and strong in every citizen of the holy city. People will be kindness and love and obedience. It will be a joyful time. These are the times to look forward to. Heaven celebrates this messianic reign of Jesus. Be of joy to think of the times that shall soon be upon the earth. And the verse I was given to share with you is Revelation 20, 4 to 6. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and a judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has been part of the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So I also have this dream that um, relates to my role and, um, and I'm pressed to share that one with you. So here's the dream, the Benjamin house. So we were looking at a home with a realtor and this guy and his wife. It was in the northern part of Israel, in the hills, but the plot of land was fairly level around the house. It was an odd but cool home, nothing like I've been in. It was decorated very 1990s, but it had potential. I was like, whatever about the interior decor. Apathetic at another move. Jim was very cautious and trying to judge my facial reactions as to what I thought of the place. I could tell that he was really excited to change jobs and to change countries. The place had metal and fabric and mirrors on the walls in a very 90s vibe. It also had these cushioned dividers between the mirrors that were covered in fake teal and hot pink leather. It was hideous. Uh, but I could see, with a little creativity and lots of redoing, the place had potential. I imagined it in a more classical, country, rustic French kind of vibe. I could see this could happen. The biggest complaint in my mind was that it looked like it was a huge pain to clean. The bathrooms had pink water pooled, and uh, there were channels that held the tubes for a hot bubbly tub, but the actual tub was missing. Just all the piping was there, 
but I could tell it was all pooled and pink and it was disgusting. Um, this told me that this was going to be a problem to keep clean. It mildewed very fast. The shower glass was soap scummy and the pink hints told me that the water was very soft water, meaning was I was going to have a weekly task keeping this shower clean. The many nooks and crannies also screamed it would need to be cleaned very often. Walking through the house, I was just tired thinking, oh, this place is going to be so terrible to clean. But then I was like, okay, I'll just deal with it. I haven't seen Jim this happy about moving in a long time. I suppose my face gave the truth in one bathroom that it was in its pre-mildew pink phase. And the realtor said, oh, don't worry about that. The maid comes tomorrow. She hasn't been here because no one has been living here but the maid comes with the house. The house seemed to be an okay size, but then we walked outside and I fell in love. There were gardens that were very well kept. They had pebble paths that were divided by boxwood shrubs. It was a wonderful garden. One area of the garden was all vegetables. Another area was all flowers. It was very charming. It even had little benches to sit on. As we were out there, there was a man in black rubber boots that came by with a bucket and he was going to deadhead one of the plants. Another man drew my attention as he was walking past the grassy area behind the gardens and he was in work clothes common to those who care for horses. I said, are there horses? And then we went to see the barns. It was the cleanest place I've ever seen. Horses, goats, chickens, pigs, sheep, etc. The barns were very posh and very clean. The nicest place I've ever seen for animals. Um, there was a pasture that seemed to go on forever and ever for the horses. The weather was warm, but not oppressively hot. Oh, the nature, the outdoors, the gardens. I really loved it. The inside, well, that was going to be a project. But the privacy and the cared for land was quite nice. So Jim said, what do you think? My attention was drawn to this strange rickety looking fence. And I said, if I could update it and put a real fence, I could see this place maybe working, but I don't know what the budget is. When we went back into the house, we walked up to this humble back door. And at that moment, I realized this was a very old home that someone had kind of destroyed with this tasteless decor from the 90s. The door was an old farmhouse door, classic. And the knobs were also antique. So we went into this old door and we walked in through like a service area and then into the kitchen. It was a true nightmare, but the bones had potential. I looked at some lifting sheetrock and I realized that someone had taken sheetrock and covered these old, beautiful, antique bricks. I saw a lot of potential there. I was looking at the shapes and the sizes and all of the different details and I realized I think we really could renovate this place. Jim was shocked that I was not ripping this place to pieces with critique because of its obvious variance from a home that I would normally prefer. But in my mind, I was thinking through what choices I would make differently, how the kitchen would look, how the family room would look, what I would do to take all the 90s things out and make it a very cozy, homey place to be and restore the natural beauty that the bones offered for that house. So there was something very charming about it if you could erase that 90s vibe. So I asked the realtor where the kids' rooms were and the realtor opened up this door off of the kitchen and it was like a hidden area. And there was so much more house in this direction. This hallway led down to another hallway and it had four doors on one side of the hall. And I thought, well, that's different, but I proceeded through the first door, which had its own hallway on the left there was a walk-in closet and on the right, there was a bathroom. And then it came out into this huge bedroom that had four beds and lots and lots of windows. 
Out of curiosity, I went right back through this door and I wanted to try and see what was in door number two. So I opened the second door and it was exactly the same, a walk-in closet on the left, a nice bathroom on the right, and then you went down a little hallway and there was this same exact bedroom. So I figured the other two doors must be the same. So I was like, well, that's kind of different, but it's kind of cool too. So as I'm passing by the first bed, which was recessed, and then it had a huge window. It was as long as the bed and it overlooked the garden that we had just come from. The bed past that also was recessed with a full length window and it looked over the garden and also looked over the horses. And I thought, oh, I wonder if our number two child would want this bed because she loves animals. At that time, all the kids, they were much younger than they are now and they came bouncing into the room and they each selected their beds. Um, my number one child took the first one overlooking the garden, which made sense. She's always loved gardens. But then our number three child took the second bed that overlooked the horses instead of our number two child. But then I recalled how much our number three loved horses. At the end of the room, there was a huge window that overlooked the pasture and the hills and the horse area. On the beds on the left, they were also recessed and they, were all, they also had full length windows. To my surprise, number two chose the farthest bed and I looked out that window and as I was looking out the window, I noticed that she was setting up all her favorite childhood things, which were frogs and lizards. There was built-in storage around each of these beds, like cut into the wall were little shelves. Well, she chose this bed that looked out the window and I noticed that it had an amazing lake view and I even saw frogs hopping around. So then it made sense to me that she chose this bed. Then the last bed was for number four and she had a lake view, but this also had a garden view because there was another garden on the side of the lake. So this was perfect for an artist. I looked back and in the built-in shelves, each child had things very important to them in childhood and in adulthood. Already moving in, number one child had books lined up. Our number three child had crafts on her shelf. Our number four child had art supplies. So the room was very dated, but considering the water view, I decided the coastal theme was going to make this room really cute, especially with thick crown molding. I had to balance out. Next, I was talking to this guy and his wife and they were asking questions and I was asking them questions. They were asking if this was like a home I grew up in. And I said, oh no, I was the daughter of a millionaire and we lived in a really cool house, but it was very different from this. Then I asked what side of the car the steering wheel was on. Like, was it like America on the left or was it like England on the right? And they said, it's the same as America. It's on the left. And I said, yeah, I guess um, England and its subsidiaries are probably the only ones who have the steering wheel on the right. And they agreed. Then they said, well, what do you think? And I said, well, it would be a big change to move to a new country. Jim came up and said, so what do you think? And he pulled me aside. Should we take this place? And I said, well, I could live here, but I don't know what the budget is. And like, there are a lot of changes that I would want to make. And past that grassy yard, you know where that fence is? That would definitely need to be updated. I mean, this place could be really nice, but it would be a major project and really expensive to change. Like it's a really nice plot of land and it feels really private. And then he was shocked. He said, what else bothers you about this place? Like, what do you want to change? And I said, um, I want to pretty much change everything. Like it does seem to have really good bones. Like I really like the floors and that hidden brick. I would want to take down all the sheetrock. Someone just killed it with this nineties decor, but 
it's mostly cosmetic. But you need to understand if we get this place that I am legit changing every inch of it. I want to make it rustic and classy and bring back life to it. The, the beauty that's underneath all of this horror from the 90s. But that fence, it's all rickety and metal between the yard and the horse pasture. That is the first thing that has to go. That is just too tough on the eyes. I thought for a minute and then I said, also, this house looks like a real pain to clean, but I'll deal with it because I love the gardens and the animals. But I didn't notice a pool. And he said, so should I take the job? We could live in this house? And I said, knowing it was going to be a bit chaotic for a while with all of the renovations, sure, but when would this happen? Because if we move to Israel and I still haven't gone to visit my mom, she's going to be so ticked off. Like this would be leaving the country and she's ticked off that I haven't gone to visit her and we've only changed cities and states. And then Jim said, well, it is an odd thing here. You have to put a bid in on the house on a Friday and then it gets inspected on a Saturday and then you move in on Sunday. And then there were three statements of things that were going to occur that I don't recall. So there may not be time to get back and tell her that we are moving, but you know, she'll figure it out. So we went back to look at the yard again. And while we were out there, these men were putting up a proper fence. It was very nice between the yard and the horses. Interestingly, it had no gate. They had a gate with them, but it was not a soft stain like the one they were putting up. It was some hideous thick orange plastic thing. And they decided not to put it up that it wouldn't look good. And they just left an open walkway between the areas of the horses and the yard, which looked very nice. And then I was like, wait, this means Jim already called these guys and had them put this up. Very unlike him to initiate this so quickly. And then I looked up at him like, what is this change in you? And I was also thinking, who puts a fence up on a house they haven't even bought? Then I was like, well, apparently we must have bought this house already, but we'd be back to move in in three days. I said, oh, my mom's going to really be ticked off. Then Jim said, well, that's life. It's move now or miss this opportunity. And at that moment, thinking of the fence already going up, I knew this was urgent. And I knew if the fence was going up that quick, that I had an unlimited budget and free reign to make the choices to change the place however I wanted. As I was leaving through the house and then the front door, the cleaning lady was coming in the front door. She was very cheerful. And then I turned to look at the front of the house, which I do not recall seeing on the way in. And I knew instantly as I saw the front, this was an estate. This was an old mansion. And then I thought, oh, I think Benjamin used to live here. And then I thought, oh, this is going to be cool. And then I said, well, I never thought I'd move out of the U.S. to another country, but I guess I am. When I woke up, I received personal prophecy that this is the Benjamin house in Israel and it was going to be my home to live in during the thousand year reign. The fact that I had to renovate this place was symbolic of my role, which is first to repair the Benjamin tribe and second to repair the church. I was told also that this home was in the very location that the original Benjamin tribe house was. It had been abandoned in the 90s and that Jim and I were placed together and that we were meant to marry one another so that there would be a marriage of two Benjaminites. It was already determined that I was going to be the one to lead, but I had to have a Benjaminite husband so that our children could be royal. Okay, so here are some interesting things about the dream and some things to uh, point out. First of all, I just want to say that um, I don't have a huge respect for this man. Uh, I think the only reason he was in the dream is to 
orient me very quickly that I was in Israel. And secondly, the meaning of his name. His last name, Sarfati, is a Sarfatic Jewish name. It means France or French, representing the Jews of French descent from the biblical placement of Sarfati, which was later identified as France. Modern Hebrew is Sepharad, or the Iberian Peninsula, and the Ashkenazi, a descendant of Noah, the first son of Homer, the grandson of Noah through Japheth. Jeremiah 51 27 says a kingdom to fight against Babylon in the table of nations associated with the Scythians, then the Slavic, then Germany and Northern Europe. So Europeans in general and German royalty. So famous people with this name have been doctors, singers, actresses, photographers, rabbis, children, authors, writers, baseball players, and mathematicians. I have to say of all the people I know that are verified Benjamin tribe, this does define the entire group of us, these skills. Now, Jim's brother had 23andMe, the genetic test done. He is not a Christian, but he had it done. And he was surprised to find out that he had a very high percentage of Ashkenazi Jewish dissented genetics within him. So that's kind of interesting. Um, my number three had a dream that she met one of Jim's great, great, great grandmothers or aunts in heaven, and they shared food from her origin country, which was Hungary, in a Slavic nation. He was born in America, but his family was all born in France and in Austria. Um, I had words given that my mission was to save Jim. He is the only Christian in his family for several generations. And he is in the genetic line of Benjamin, as well as other tribes. Now, in the 1990s, that's when this entire house was slaughtered in decor. The 1990s is when we got married. And it is also when the church really decided to break away from traditional Christianity and get into the seeker-friendly thing and start making significant changes that really destroyed us. So I'm pretty sure that's why it was said in the 90s. And I do have many other dreams related to me fixing the church. They're always locked in the 90s. Okay, so our kids, they were not their natural ages now, which are, you know, married and, you know, dating seriously ages and, you know, all out of high school, all out of college, you know, that kind of stuff. But they were not even in their natural birth order age gaps. Okay, so I was very surprised when they came in. And in the dream, I was very grateful that all four were there because my older two at the time this dream was given were prodigals. Now, only one is a prodigal. One has already returned. So in the when I woke up from the dream, I was really happy because I was like, okay, all four are going to make it. There were these guys working and the maid, um, the service team. What I was so surprised with is I've always had a very firm policy to always do everything myself that I am able to do. I don't like to hire out to have things done. If I can afford it or not has nothing to do with it. It is all about if I'm able to do it, I'm going to put the effort in and do it properly. So um, for these service guys to come, the details of that one guy who was coming to deadhead the plants. One of the things that drives me insane about the neighborhood we live in is we have yard care. And they just kind of annihilate all the plants. They don't do what fine gardeners do, which is really care for the plants, look where to cut the plant, you know, deadhead the plants, all that kind of stuff. So this told me that these people are highly detailed and they really cared a lot. The horse care guy, the plate, the stalls were amazing. Like the whole place was so luxurious. And then the maid, she was just so cheerful and everything. And I've never had a maid. I mean, that just seems like wrong to me, but... I could understand with the volume of work that I um, have to put forth on this side, and I know it's going to increase after we're translated, I won't have time to do all of these things. So the Lord's reassuring me that he's going to provide people that are going to be able to help me at the detailed level that I would care about these little things. Decor. I could easily see how to restore this place. I think it's interesting that I wanted rustic French, and then later I find out that Sarfati means French. 
related to the European French Jews. I mean, that's amazing. I did feel like I had free will to make this place any way I wanted without any financial restrictions. There always have been limits here for me. Energy, time, money, other residents' opinions, um, whatever. I can never have like exactly the house I want. That's just not a thing. And the length of time we stay in each house, it makes it not wise to put that kind of time in. So the current decor is very tacky, very 90s. 90s is reflective of rebellion, change, walking away from God, computers, um, keeping up with everything that's very modern. Um, big significant shifts happen in the 90s for our culture. The charm was under the mask of the 90s. The bones, the foundation of that house were quite lovely. The colors of the 90s that were offensive to me, the teal and the hot pinky purple that was really popular then. Um, teal is spiritual wisdom on the positive, but on the negative, it's the revelation of being mixed with man's carnal desires. That completely defines the church of the 90s. We take our spiritual wisdom and we just mix it with man's man's carnal desires. And then we're like, yeah, this is good, right? No. Hot pinky purple, that represents the passion for the carnal blended with Jesus in its holiness. You've got to be kidding me. That also defines the 90s. The mirrors all over the house, which were very irritating, that represents the reflection of self selfishness, carnal cares, the appearance of right, forgetting one's face um, and forgetting one's roots. Also dead on for the 90s and the church. The large windows in the bedrooms of the kids' rooms, um, this represents one's view of life. Having eyes to see God's beauty, one's hopes and perceptions of life ahead. The location. The northern hill country is where the Benjaminites lived originally. Asking about if the driver's side was on the left or the right was interesting because vehicles represent ministry. If you're going to have the driver's side be on England's side, that is to have a kingly rule, which has no free will. And then if it's going to be on the U.S. side, that would be to have free will. So this shows how I'm allowed to manage the ministry. I will have free will. The orange gate, the plastic gate um, that did not get put up Orange shows change and new world order, so there will be none of that. The gates also divide, and there was left no gate. So this means that peace and order between the animals and the people, and there would be no security needed to be between the leaders and the people. It would be safe. Um, so this has already been foretold in the thousand year reign. Um, this is congruent with all of the different prophecies, personal prophecies that I have received that say that um, I am going to lead. Also, it matches with the Bible saying that the house of Judah is running Israel into the ground. And prophetically, they go down and little Benjamin becomes their leader. All right, the timing of this. Clearly, there was a specific language be regarding those three days. Buy the put the bid in on Friday, have the house inspected on Saturday, and then move in on Sunday. I have very heavy in my personal prophecies about a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, me leaving and me starting my job by Sunday. So that's very congruent. It was urgent for me to make the decision on the house and the job in the dream. It was a three day span from then until going, and there would be no time to tell my mother who was staying behind for the beginning of sorrows as a faithful. So what I want to say is, I don't think every single one of you is going to have a Benjamin house. What I do think is every single one of you is going to have a very amazing place to live and a very unique and well thought out um, situation. Like if you won't have time to clean, the Lord will provide for you people to clean. If you won't have time to do X, Y, or Z, it will be provided. If you um, 
have a leaning towards decor, you will have a house you will be able to decorate. If you think, oh gosh, I could never, I don't want to do any of that. All I want to do is sit and talk with my friends. I'm sure your experience will be much more like that. You'll get the perfect house that's not redone and you'll just be able to hit the ground running and get to know people and share the Lord and all your stories together and it'll be great. So I think this is just saying that this is like an actual literal thing that's going to happen and that we can be encouraged by that, something to look forward to. All right, so here's some verses that support this dream. Psalm 68, 27. There's little Benjamin, their leader. And Zechariah 14, 10 and 11. And the land will be turned to a plain from Geboa to Ramon, south of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from the Benjamin gate to the place of the first gate and the corner gate and from the tower of Hanel to the king's winepress. The people shall dwell in it and no longer shall there be utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. So I hope you find that encouraging and I'll see you next time.